Synthesis is a three-part process. The first part is thesis, understanding that which is to the extent that you can. The second part is the opposite of that, antithesis or antithesis, and that opposite of sound is silence. And the third part is out of that silence, you bring something new. That's synthesis. And that is the process. First, learn everything you can about the real world, and real sounds, then go into your head, relax, and imagine. And then from that imagination, figure out how to make that a real thing and bring it into the real world where it becomes thesis. And you start the process round again. We need to re-examine all the time the past. And by looking at the past, and understanding why things happen, you can then see what forward movement is going to be and how it is going to change things. I feel that the modular synthesizer needs to be explored way further than it has been in the past. It has so much potential, and I think it was a tragedy that it ceased to be available. The Moog modular synthesizer went out of production far too soon. It went out of production at a time when people thought, not knowing what the potential of those instruments could be, that it would be much easier for them to go around with a keyboard that they could carry under their arms. The first time around, I think electronic music missed a lot of its potential. People misunderstood it. The word synthesizer was already tricky. It sounded like synthetic and synthesizing, making something, a copy. It didn't lend itself to being musical unless you spent a lot of time push button stuff came along and MIDI came along and they could just push a button and get exactly the same sound every time. That's where they went because instant gratification is the name of the game. With the modular, you make your sounds different every day. Things have become too predictable and it makes young people think this is the way it, uh, it's supposed to be. You know, things move forward maybe for the wrong reasons and Maybe it's time to go back to see what we missed. modular synthesizer really opened my ears. It gave me expertise that I hadn't had before in how to produce sounds, in how to play sounds, in how to access sounds, and how to expect for things that hadn't been done before. After getting used to what the oscillators would sound like, what the pure oscillations were, I knew that by filtering them and doing and shaping them, you could get them to sound in ways that I'd never heard anything before. Your ear learns to analyze sound. You think, oh, what is the frequency? What is the sound? You know, what is that envelope doing? What is that attack? What is the decay? So you, your ear analyzes sound, and that's just fundamental.
I think modular synthesizers really taught me how to listen because I would just turn on one oscillator and just listen to it pulsing and like just all these experiments of like if I turn the lights on all of a sudden it's doing you know drifting a little bit or if I add in another one then I would hear these amazing beat frequencies and that just taught me how to listen to how things interact in a very simple way. It was like having musicians there with you all the time because it would do its own thing sometimes. Modular synthesizers have an internal life entirely of their own. They are always vibrating. Anything that is a vibrating has a life. This is really like a perfect microcosm. It feels like it's generating life or it's generating something real and alive because it is real sounds and it's like real vibrations. Those sounds are what they are because their vibrations, they're the same vibrations that are moving your ears, that are pumping your heart, and that are moving shit around your brain. It's like, it's all, it's all the same thing. There is a sonic world in, inside the human organism. And I do think that these machines are capable of kind of rendering that kind of sound in a way that other things are, are not. It's like love, where that connection happens before you even know what it, what it means. There's that chemical reaction that happens, and I think that that's what your initial rapport is. I think people have that with instruments, and I think that's true with modular synthesizers, particularly because they're so alive. You know, it's something you can respond to. You can set it up so that it does have a life of its own, and then you think, well, let's see what it's going to say now. It's a lively companion. <laughs>
on them and having your mind locked into them gives you the love and the ability to discover sounds in great detail. You can use synthesizers in two ways. You can try to imitate existing sounds in thesis, or you can innovate and create something that's never been heard before. I know this can be used for a lot of traditional music, but for me, that's not what it's about. I wasn't trying to make the sound of a flute or the sound of a violin or, you know, using a keyboard. I, I you know, it was so limited. Creativity is your only sort of limit in terms of what the modular can make because I think a lot of people hear patches that can be so crazy and seem really intense and non-musical and noisy or whatever, but at the same time you can make very musical passages that can interact with other instruments and you can, you know, use quantized voltages to actually restrict the modulars into scales and it just sort of depends on how you want to use it. These are really things that you can get lost in. We have absolutely not even scraped the surface of all the sounds that the synthesizer can make. They are infinite in number. And the way that you create sounds is ever changing. And that's the beauty of it, is it's always different and you always go forward. It is not possible that we have really explored everything that can be done by a modular instrument. You have so much flexibility for creating your instrument and you don't get bored. And you get to do one one day and then you change your patch and you do, do another. You know, really, it's, it's like having all the colors in the box, you know. I am absolutely excited that the modular Moog synthesizers are going back into production because they really fill such a purpose in, in music and in the minds of musicians. I think it's really important to have tools and also experiences that, you know, really stimulate, you know, real leaps of imaginative creativity. I think that's how the world changes. Something like this to me just says, like, new, you know, even though it's so classic. It's like, I know that I could spend years with this thing and never run out of, like, sounds and never run out of things to get out of it.
I'll make them like they used to. I think just generally you find the more time you spend with stuff, you end up going further and further back to get the best sounding shit. There's something romantically noble about doing things this way. Who puts this much man-made work into a consumer product? It's insane. <laughs> I know the look of these instruments so well, and I know them as vintage instruments. So it's remarkable to see these, uh, which evoke that immediately, but are also clearly, you know, like brand new. The idea that this would be available uh, to, to kind of modern producers and the modern kind of music landscape is so exciting because, you know, say what you will about the, the historical kind of context of these things and what people perceive a modular synthesizer to be, I want to hear a bass line out of this thing in a record. Like, I, I would love to... Could you, could you imagine the low end on this thing in a club? <laughs> We always thought of technology as this linear progression, and we were always, because it was new, looking for the next thing and going forward, and you know, you'd wake up every day and it would change. And now I think we have a depth of experience and history that people are starting to look at the root system of the whole phenomenon and saying, I want to get my hands on, you know, that early experience, that experience that was so exciting. This new world changes always because even the history of the world is a sine wave and continues to be a sine wave. I think it's important for both creative people and for cultures in general to re-examine and learn from history and learn from their past. And with the modular synthesizer, the fact that it is now back on, uh, available, it gives musicians the opportunity to go into the silence of their minds and come out with new and wonderful music and sounds that have never been heard before. Mm -hmm.